I'm Kat from Water Rangers and today we're going to be looking at the winter test kit. I'm here at my sample location. Your sample location might be chosen for various reasons. Uh, a lot of people doing winter testing will test before and after uh, a road, looking at the difference in the road salts. In this case, we're looking at the entrance to our lake and wondering if there's any influence of road salts here. For winter monitoring, there are lots of extra things that you need to be aware of. Uh, safety comes first. Test with a friend, be very safe. We give you a few different methods to collect your sample safely, um, but when in doubt, don't test. You can also reference our guide for ice thickness uh, safety, um, but be really, really aware when you're doing winter monitoring cold water can be very, very dangerous. All right, first thing we're gonna do is get out our, our field guide. It's gonna have all the information I'm gonna go through today, plus much, much more. It's going to tell you about normal values. It's going to tell you about your safety protocol, as well as how to enter in your data on the data platform. So this is your handy guide that you can reference throughout your testing experience. We're also going to get out our notepad so that we can start entering in the details of our testing. And you'll notice in your field guide, it goes through all this as well, but we guide you through the process with our notepad. Do you see the first thing we're going to do is first get our pen out, our front pocket. There's also some goodies in your front pocket, some, some badges, some um, stickers, your magnet to remind you to do your testing, um, but also your pen. So we're going to start with our date and time, the body of water, so this is Lac Maglashan, and the location name. So you're going to have a specific site location, might be upstream from uh, the road that you're particularly interested in, or downstream right after it. You're then going to also record, is the ice on or off? This is more important if you're uh, looking at a body of water that, that freezes over. In this case, this stream is always running, and so we wouldn't have a, an ice on us off. The next thing we're going to look at is our weather yesterday and our weather now. Water quality is very, very uh, related to um, weather, and so keeping track of weather is very important. So we're gonna note if it's sunny, cloudy, rainy, snowy, windy, and then any other details like the, the temperature, you can use your weather app to enter that in there. All right, now that we've added our context, we're going to start our tests. In your test kit bag, got various items. We've got our test strips here, our conductivity meter, and then you have two ways that you can collect samples. The first method is using a sample cup onto what we call a reacher stick. So we're gonna secure it in here like this, extend the pull, and then we're able to reach the water. So if I'm using this method, I would go ahead, rinse the cup three times in the water that I'm testing, and then I'm going to take a sample around 15 centimeters below the surface, or in this case, the water isn't 15 centimeters deep. I'm going to take it as deep as I can without touching the bottom. Like so. All right. And I'm going to take this off. Put that down there. And I can use my towel in here dry off my equipment. It is stainless steel, so it shouldn't rust readily, but we always like to take care, really good care of our equipment. You can contract that. Right. In this case, usually for a site like this, we would use the reacher stick, but if your site is on off a little bridge or it's not, it's got a steep bank, we really encourage you to use your throw bucket. You're going to, again, rinse your bucket three times in the water you're going to be testing. Just get some water in there. Take it up, pour it back out again, rinse, that's two, and then uh, sometimes 
pop it back in. Three. Get my sample. There we go. All right. So we've got our sample. And the first thing we're going to do is our conductivity. So conductivity is anything that conducts electricity in water. Every body of water has its own normal value. And when we're winter monitoring, often we're looking for the impact of road salts. So that's why we would do an upstream and downstream location. We can test before the road to get what it is before without the extra salt. And then we can test after, and then we can make a little bit of an interpretation of uh, the influence of that road on that water body. So to do this test, we're going to turn it on, pressing the top button, and then we'll put it in the water. And we're going to wait till it stabilizes. So swish it around and wait till it stabilizes. The water is about 1.9 degrees. That's uh, the bottom number, and the top is about 100 microsiemens per centimeter. Now, since I've been testing here for a long time, I know that it usually is between 95 and 105 microsiemens per centimeter. So this is really normal for this water body. So I'm not going to expect there to be a big influence of road salts today. Okay, once you've recorded that in your notepad, you're going to turn your conductivity meter off. You're going to press it once at the top. In our case, our reading was 100 microsiemens per centimeter, and we could see the little US in the corner. If your reading looks something like 1.3, you may have gone above 1,000, for example, and your reading might show an MS. This means to record your result, you need to multiply your results by 1,000. So 1.3 would equal 1,300. We're now going to do our chloride test. Your chloride strips are in this bottle here. We want to keep this out of the sun. So make sure you take your strip out and then you close it right away. Go ahead and grab one with dry hands. Oh, tricky. All right. Now, a lot of test strips take not very long. This test strip takes a lot longer to um, develop than a lot of other types of test strips. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the water. You need to be very patient with this test and you need to wait until the top, uh, right at the top line turns black. And you'll see a picture of this in your field guide for a reference. Um, but it does take a couple minutes. So uh, set your timer for a couple minutes, hold on to it. So as you can see here, our reading is 2.5 and we have our chart. You can see that your reading translates to a reading in parts per million. So you're gonna round it to the closest area. So here we see it's 2.6, which equals 73 parts per million. To interpret your results, check out your guide. Um, and you really want to know the difference between uh, a reference point and uh, your um, area of interest. So again, a lot of people with, with road salt monitoring are looking before and after a road. You may have noticed that that took a lot longer than you expected. So please be patient to make sure that you get your full reading. When you're done with your strip, we have a little container that you can uh, use and then dispose of when you get home. And now I'm going to pack up my kit. First step is to empty out your water containers. There we go. I'm going to dry off my bucket. I put it in here sideways. Like so. And then your items go into the bucket. If 
forget your comparison guide, your, your notepad, your pen. Go into this little back pocket. Now, one of the most important things to remember is that we need your data recorded on our data platform. So if you've put your data into your notepad, just be sure to transfer it to our data platform when you get home. If you have a phone with you and you have our app, our iOS app, you can use that to enter your data right in the field. That's it. Make sure you leave your place as good as when you did it. One path in, one path out to your spot to not disturb anything. If you have any questions at all, we're always here to help. So enjoy testing and be safe.